Welcome back. And now it's time for our press review. We are going to take a look at the main headlines of our Egyptian dailies. It's a pleasure to have with us Dr. Walat Wasfi, Professor of Political Marketing. Good morning. Good morning. Well, as usual, we are going to take a look at the main headlines, starting with a Shiru newspaper. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended on Thursday the launch of the Navy Maneuver Zeta Sawari in Alexandria among top military officials, including Minister of Defense Sidi Subhi and the Chief of Staff Mahmoud Hagezi. The maneuver included many activities and training operations tasks, including securing the range of the Navy as well as developing means of communication, the movement of ships, securing offshore units, and the implementation of all forms of the sea defenses against enemy targets. We have more details in the following report and we'll be back. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi attended the final day of the naval drills, Zeta Sawari, or the Battle of the Mass, on Thursday. In his speech, Sisi said the maneuvers reflected a message that Egypt is a strong country which defends but does not attack, and that it is able to protect its coastlines, lands, and national security. The President hailed the maneuvers that were carried out by life and munition, saying they reflected the battling efficiency of all units. The head of state raised the Egyptian flag on the Long Life Egypt Freight Gate, which joined the Egyptian fleet recently and took part in the exercise. The maneuver included many activities and training operations tasks, including securing the range of the Navy as well as developing means of communication, the movement of ships, securing offshore units, and the implementation of all forms of sea defenses against enemy targets. President Sisi raised Egypt's flag on new frame Friday Tahya Misr or Long Life Egypt at the beginning of the maneuvers. Welcome back. I'm talking about these exercises. Definitely this is of great importance. Actually, it came also after the exercises that took place also in Saudi Arabia. This is something of great importance and even the meeting of President Abdel Fattah Sisi with the Egyptian army. How do you read it as a whole? Uh, of course, uh, we need to focus more and more uh, on the Egyptian army and how the, uh, the, the training even and the task that they are authorized to do um, as to, to encourage normal people to go as we need more and more soldiers nowadays. Um, still, uh, I'll not talk about only training, but about the main role of the Egyptian army in Sinai. It's re a real uh, war that we have uh, to face. Uh, let's say that that image or that celebration really was a good one or a good image for uh, how uh, is great the performance of the Egyptian army in terms of tasks and training and sp uh, especially uh, the securing the seashores. It's very important too to highlight it and to, to manage the movement of ships nowadays. Uh, it will not only take place at Alexandria but also at Suez Canal so they must be uh, very well trained and must be supported with uh, high uh, equipment uh, with the high technical or um, uh, good equipment uh, so it was a very really um, great one or uh, representative right. moving on to Akbar daily to take a look at another headline Egypt's parliament is due to take part in the next assembly of the Inter-Parliamentary Inter Union, the IPU, an international organization for parliaments after an almost four-year lapse. Egypt resumed its membership in the IPU in January over two years after its membership was frozen in 2013 for not having a functioning parliament. An Egyptian parliamentary delegation flew to Lusaka in Zambia for the RPU 134th Assembly, which will kick off on Friday. The five-day assembly brings together parliamentarians from around the world to look at international issues and make recommendations for action. Major issues that will be discussed this round include global cooperation against the threat of terrorism and rejuvenating democracy. How do you read this actually and how important it is finally after we have a parliament and I know you have always mentioned that you are not that optimistic. Yes, of course I'm not that optimistic and can you remember when we, uh, when we said that uh, the members after being um, um, elected they must be trained on communication skills or parliamentary uh, communication skills, how to deal with each other, how to deal inside the parliament, how to deal with the people. Now, 
let me uh, be honored to see how to deal with other countries and other uh, international parliaments is very important. And I think that there is training courses is not that an easy uh, thing to, to do or to have, but they must have because we have seen a lot. Um, I think in those couple of months, we have seen a lot of scenes that really let me... We are not in favor of. At all. Yes. And especially not all of them, but really group composed of them. Yes. So there, maybe they are 10, but to train to represent Egypt in a good way, uh, it's really in a very important duty. Not, not in, we are not talking about the Egyptian citizen. We are talking about, about the image of Egypt outside. So hope as to trying to be optimistic too. Right. Um, moving on to Egypt independent. The Social Solidarity Ministry, Reda Weli, announced the opening of a special unit for observing and assessing the work of foreign non-governmental organizations operating in Egypt. According to the Ministry's official for NGO Affairs, the unit was created by Social Solidarity Minister to help the ministry and organizations to operate in Egypt effectively. And I like the word effectively because I remember, again, we talked a lot about the NGOs in Egypt. We have mentioned a huge number of NGOs. And actually, most of them, they have their own funding. And the point is that still we did not feel what they are doing, talking about efficiency, talking about the disciplines required, many, many important things. On the other side, if they did their homework, maybe much better than this, definitely things will be completely changed. Let us talk about NGOs in Egypt. Now what is the real role of the NGOs? To develop the community. First of all, to develop the community, to encourage all people to work for the belief, not the money, as volunteering work. That's the real uh, role and um, the real uh, duty towards how to develop the, the community or have a good one. Uh, but let me talk about the governmental uh, NGOs here in Egypt. Not all of them for the main uh, mission or uh, they have assigned. By the way, we, we may find a group of people have nothing to do, so they would like to have media spot or something to do in life, so let's have an NGO to face uh, poverty. Although there are more than 100 NGOs fa facing poverty, and we have seen nothing, by the way. Uh, let's face uh, the problem of slums, let's uh, increase... Literacy, for example. Uh, for example, a, a lot of different topics, they are making use of it, but the good is good and the bad is bad and it is well known. So there are governmental NGOs that is known by its real um, effective work in uh, the Egyptian community and also encourage uh, all students among all universities to, to, to be volunteers there and to work and to, de to deliver their message. Encouraging non-governmental, maybe we have here two are not cool names, but two, uh, two uh, well-known non-governmental um, organizations developing here in Egypt, and we see significant if, uh, and effective real work on uh, which is real, not only words, as we said. So encouraging more, it will be much better, but I hope to but depend... I like the idea of just involving the students as well, because definitely this is the best choice actually and you are going to to help them to to participate in the community to share in yes. the the social life definitely this is of great importance it's real duty you know um, at at my university for my students i always ask them not i'm not a lecturer to come in inside the class and to teach you the material only i have to teach you your duty and your role outside the class how you will deal that's why i really are really keen on delivering um, for example we are preparing uh, on uh, tourism marketing, how to market for uh, tourism or to attract tourists. As long as you mentioned tourism, <laughs> yes. let me move on to another headline from Al Ahram Daily. Tourism Minister Dr. Hisham Zazwa met on Thursday with the Malaysian ambassador to Egypt to discuss means of cooperation to attract more tourists from Malaysia to Egypt. And during the meeting, the minister stressed the good relations between Egypt and Malaysia and the keenness of the Egyptian side to consolidate the bonds of these relations, especially in the field of tourism, pointing to the steady increase in the numbers of tourists coming from Malaysia to Egypt. Yes, that's what I'm really talking right now about. Yes, it's not only the duty of the minister. 
it's it's our own duty that's why I'm telling you that I have to make a lot of seminars and inshallah within those two weeks I'll start a campaign of seminars among uh, all universities delivering that we have as Egyptian citizens to change our attitude and our culture values something came to, to my attract mind. Me. you're talking about something important about the students and you know you have a very important let me say mm -hmm. weapon yes. or tool mm -hmm. that is the social media yeah the youth are spending all of their time on the social media mm -hmm. unfortunately some of them they are responding in a way that they cannot since they don't understand the value of their world and definitely this has been used by other people who are dedicated to sit yeah. and to, to, to use our youth through the social media actually to trigger violence. So this is of great importance if you can just spend two minutes every day writing something about Egypt, promoting for Egypt, because definitely each one has many of the other international communities still with him yes. on the Facebook of or course. Twitter or whatever. Even if by evidence to by the uh, uh, publishing their photos show the best uh, places and not to criticize in uh, let us say not to continue with others when yes. they just blame the country for the tourism uh, prices or challenge they have to blame them. ourselves what yes. happened at Sharm el Sheikh last year and the image of the Egyptians uh, at the sea and how they go inside the sea in that very uh, really a shame scene that we have seen and also at Hurghada that scene really will, will make to go away not only government we too we have to, to change uh, our um, culture and our way of communication when we have tourists here we have to value because Egypt is known by that by, by how uh, the culture and the, the, the I'm not sure that 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 uh, that old word that we are used to say but let us say we need to develop more and more and to represent the best in us. So, so I hope so that that seminar and to make use and to guide students, your role is very effective, maybe more than the academic stuff nowadays to deliver that message, maybe more important than the government and than the ministers because you are the real coming generation that the outside countries are trying to destroy or to brainwash your, uh, your mind. So, so follow your, your, let's say, follow the right, which is right. easy. Um, moving on to another headline. An official Russian report suggesting that criminal activity was behind the deadly crash of a metro jet in central Sinai in October 2015 was referred to the Prosecutor General by Egypt's Independent Investigations Committee on Thursday. The committee received on 14th of March 2016 an official report from Russia's official investigation. And the head of the committee, Ayman al-Muqaddim, stated that the committee has referred the matter to the Attorney General of Egypt. How, how do you read it so far, still under yes. investigation? Yes. Even if we are under uh, investigation about uh, who's accused by that uh, crime, uh, the relation between Egypt and Russia especially must not be affected by those uh, crimes because yes, at the, before that crime, the relation between Egypt and uh, Russia special was, let's say, uh, the most uh, cooperative one and the most uh, efficient one, especially in the field of the military system and supporting it. So to, to come here and to, to make that kind of uh, um, disturbance between uh, b between the two countries that is what is targeted and it is really done so I hope that also the Russians people uh, understand um, and uh, and don't follow that crime yes we feel very sorry for those and also we have Egyptians that buy or fix a lot of crimes at Russia too so it's mutual thing and we should face it together right um, moving on to another headline Egypt's central bank raised interest rates by 1.5% actually uh, on Thursday to combat inflation following a sharp currency devaluation and the adoption of a more flexible exchange rate regime earlier this week. We have more details in the following report. Central bank raised interest rates by 1.5 percentage points on Thursday to combat inflation following a sharp currency devaluation of the adoption of a more flexible exchange rate regime earlier this week. In its meeting held on March 17, 
2016, the Monetary Policy Committee (MPC) decided to raise the overnight deposit rate, lowering it of the CBE's main operation by 150 BPS to 10.75%, 11.75%. And 11 to 5 percent, respectively. The discount rate was also raised by 150 BPS to 11.25 percent, the regulator said in a preliminary statement on its website following the meeting. The CBA explained that its monetary policy will be geared towards maintaining price stability by avoiding double digit inflation rates over the medium term to maintain real incomes, it said in a press release explaining its decision. The bank had been widely expected to raise interest rates after it allowed the pound to fall by over 14% at a special foreign currency auction on Monday and announced it would adopt a more flexible exchange rate regime amid a stifling foreign currency shortage crisis. Welcome back. So, not to talk about the economic situation itself or the procedures or measures taken by the central bank, but Maybe here we need to talk a lot about how to promote awareness. The Egyptian citizen must understand what is going on exactly, and many people still, they do not understand the benefits of all these measures taken. What do you think of this? I think that we have to market uh, economically for the current situation that we are facing, and especially the variation between the dollar and the Egyptian pound, and that uh, maybe some, uh, most of people making fun of that uh, deviation between uh, the dollar and the, in the, the Egyptian uh, pound, but, but it's really a disaster that we have to look at, and the government must take um, a real step actions to, to face it, um, because we have to, to attract investors or international uh, businessmen to come here and to invest, to have a real market, or otherwise we're gone. So it's, uh, and that will reflect in a direct way with the political situation of Egypt. And I think that that is what is really uh, targeted by other uh, countries, uh, European one, uh, to, to, to let Egypt in that critical situation. So we have to support and to, to, to go on with that inflation, yes, I know it's really critical one, but inshallah we will overcome it. Right, let's be optimistic. Dr. Wala Awasfi, Professor of Political Marketing, thank you very much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. And still we have more to bring you, so let's move on to a quick break and we'll be back to resume our breakfast show. <laughs> 